after skipping through 41% of filler content and we have finally completed the 700 episodes recap and review for one of the legendary big 3 animes of the 2000 era, Naruto. And now, what is next? Thankfully, the comment section has provided me with free answers. Although One Piece would have been an amazing option, but considering that One Piece is still ongoing, and I don't think I'm ready for recapping and reviewing over a thousand episodes yet. Let's start with something less intimidating. Next option is Boruto, and you already know what my opinion on that is. Skip. Hence, the only option left is Bleach, and this fits in perfectly with the upcoming Bleach Thousand Blood War arc in October. So while we're on Otaku, let's begin at one of Agent of Shimigami's summary and review. And now, smash my intro! The story centers around a 15 year old high school student, Ichigo Kurosaki. As you can tell, Ichigo has a signature natural born orange spiky hair. Don't ask me how, anime logic. And because of this, he gets picked on a lot by bullies. Unsurprisingly, like many shonen protagonists, he is hella strong and unquestionably whooped every Yankee's ass up. Another interesting fact about Ichigo is that he has the ability to see spirits. One day, he tries to protect a lolly spirit from a horror, aka evil spirit. This is where he encounters Rukia Katsuki, a Shimigami, aka Soul Reaper, whose job is to beat up the horror and guide the soul to the afterlife. By the evening, the lollicon horror named Fisher Born D is hunting down the poor lolly, and eventually it got to Ichiko's house. Meanwhile, Rukia was giving the main protagonist a lecture on horror. The horror attacked Ichiko's sister, which resulted in Ichiko rushing out and putting himself in danger. Rukia protected the reckless Ichiko but injured it herself simultaneously. Eventually, Ichiko, like many shonen protagonists, decided to fight back and protect his family. Rukia transferred her Shimigami power to Ichiko while the Zanbakdo sword, thus Ichiko Kurosaki becomes the Shimigami Asian and slashed it the horror with a giant sword as the drum beat lit up the familiar OST number one. <laughs> As a pirate episode, Taite Kubo established the theme of the story clearly. We know as a reader immediately this is about battle. This is a shonen manga. This is about spirit. We also learned what type of character Ichiko is quite quickly. Starting from his identity, his name. Ichiko, the one to protect. Next, his action. He tried to save the lolly spirit despite knowing great danger he is putting himself into. Finally, his insane strength. To protect someone, you must have some form of strength. And Kubo Sensei display Ichigo's insane hidden strength via the size of his sword. That's what she said. <laughs> As a reader, we quickly noticed it that Ichigo's Zanbato is much bigger than Rukia's. That's what she said. Giving us the audience the impression that Ichigo is at this point is already really hench to move that giant sword. From this pirate alone, we know what type of story Kubo Sensen tried to construct. A strong main protagonist that can protect his comrade against any kinds of danger with a spiritual theme. It was a great opening, but not an excellent one. What are you saying? Hear me out before bashing the like button and leaving a hate comment saying, You sick dragon balls! There's two fundamental elements that were lacking from this opening, one being Ichigo's goal and motive. He never really mentions his goal or motive, unlike Luffy trying to find One Piece, unlike Naruto trying to become a Hokage. His goal is more of a passive one, protect his precious individual from danger, therefore he is not the one actively seeking. As a main protagonist, being too passive is not ideal. You don't want to be a big character. 
The second issue is lack of character development. There isn't much character development whatsoever in this pirate, which makes Ichigo kinda a one-dimensional character as of right now. 7 out of 10 for the pirate episode. If you want to learn more about Kubo Sensei's past, check this video out. Just like every anime, the main female protagonist has been transferred to Ichigo's class as a new student. Hashtag every anime ever. A range of important characters are introduced, including Perfect Keigo, NPC Mizuru, and waifu Omihime. Rukia wants Ichigo to be her substitute as a soul reaper, thus the agent of the Shimigami arc. Get it? Shimigami is Japanese for soul eater. Yeah, no shit Sherlock! Okay, never mind. I thought I was smart for a second. Ichigo obviously refuses initially like a typical tsundere, but after a bit of physical talk, Rukia managed to push Ichigo's soul out and convert him into Shimigami by Gokon Tekko. He then defeated a weak Horo and protected a lolly spirit again. Later on, we discover that Orihime has been involved in a series of misfortune, including being hit by a cat, having a mysterious bruise mark on her leg, Creek. and a stalking spirit outside her house. 999, we have a stalker. By the evening, a mysterious horror named Acid Wire attacked Ichigo, but the Shimigami substitute managed to fight him off after a few exchanges. Sino, Rukia managed to create her own bedroom inside Ichigo's closet and lived there. Don't ask me how. The escape horror Acid Wire now lurking outside Orihime's house. Orihime's friend Enraku visited her for a stay over. Back to Ichigo and Rukia. The rabbit enthusiast theorized that Acid Wire is actually Orihime's brother, and after failing to devour Ichigo's insane spiritual energy, his next target would be Orihime. That prediction was indeed correct. As Acid Wire attacked the bestie, he first pinned Tatsuki to the ground and then pulled Orihime's soul out of her body. The frightened Orihime tried to help her best friend, but it was a fruitless effort. Just before their life were in danger, Ichigo arrived on time and blocked the attacks. Acid Wire has the ability to open the portal to return to the horror world. Using this ability, he managed to maneuver and avoided all of Ichigo's attack and captured Orihime as a hostage. The horror then spammed it tail attacks and slowly gained the upper hand in the battle. It turns out that Sola Inoue, aka Acid Wire, has died from an accident in the past and he was annoyed at Orihime, stopped it praying for him as he entered high school. Before Orihime can clarify, he crushed it her shoulder as his Sisikon complex intensified. Ichigo returned it in time and managed to slash Acid Wire's hand and free Orihime. The battle intensified. Acid Wire managed to use green acid to burn Ichigo's arm, causing him to drop the weapon, creating an opportunity to attack the armless Ichigo. But in the end, Orihime rushed it out and stopped it her bigger brother. She apologized it to her brother and thanked him for pulling her leg back and avoiding the car accident. She then explained that she stopped it praying because she wants him to move on to a better place and not worry about her. The speech moved the acid wire and his mask started to disappear, revealing the true Sora Inoue. In the end, Sola asked Ichigo to purify him with Zanbato before he reverts back to a horror. Rukia healed the Orihime with a special technique known as Kaido and erased her memory with Kiganshinki. After this event, Ichigo realized that he is the only individual that can protect his hometown as Rukia still recovering her power. Does he agree to become a Shimigami substitute? Kubo Sensei addresses Ichigo's lack of motive and goal in this episode. Ichigo now wants to be a Shimigami substitute and defeat oncoming horror while Rukia recovers. This gives us a really good character development. Orihime went from a cute naive waifu to a caring courageous individual that is willing to risk her life to protect her friend despite not having any strength. This has addressed one of Kubo Sensei's weaknesses in the pirate once again. In the following episode, we were introduced to Ichigo's friend Yasutoro Chad Saddle, and he does indeed look like a Giga Charge, like Lord Adonis.
It turns out that Chado, I mean Sado, has obtained a cursed paraki, and he starts to encounter unfortunate events, like catching a falling metal bar. God damn! It turns out that Sado has helped Ichigo in the past, and those two became friends since. After a bit of progress, we learned that the paraki was a host of a small boy spirit named Shibata, and the misfortune to the paraki was caused by a dickhead horror streaker who tried to hunt down the paraki. Based on what happens, Sado tried to protect against Streaker's attack along with Rukia's assistance. The horror mocks Rukia's weak power as he pinned her to the wall, saying, Are you really Shinigami? Before he could crush Rukia, Sado landed Chado Punch and sent him flying. A bit of background info, humans could not see spiritual things, and that includes horror, meaning that Sado just knocked it a horror away without knowing. What a giga chat, making Adonis proud. After a few exchanges, Rukia managed to lead the horror to an empty area where Ichiko ambushed the enemy from above. The battle between the two starts to intensify, and we found out that it was the streaker who murdered Yuchi's mother. This angered Ichiko which led to him tearing Streaker's tongue and slashing through Horo's mask. For the ultra evil, the fate of hell will open and grab him from behind. In the end, Yuchi thanks Chado for protecting him as Rukia sends him to the Soul Society to reunite with his mother. The female protagonist then proceeds to erase Sado's memory. Kubo Sensei once again proves how weak Rukia has become, getting mocked by a weak ass Horo while establishing Sado as a hella strong character with a kind heart. Finally, we have the introduction of Konsama, the ultimate comic relief of the series. The sixth episode begins with Rukia going to the Urahara shop, a unique store that sells items that helps the Mugami on Earth. A bunch of side characters like Jinta, Ururu, and Kisuke were introduced. Kisuke will be a really important character in the future, so don't forget about him. Rukia purchased an item called Gikogan, a tablet that contains an artificial soul which would allow Ichiko to enter Shimigami mode and have some soul look after his real body in the meantime. Everything works well until the artificial soul starts his own little rebel period where he pissed it Tatsuki off and is a little perf to Orihime, which caused it huge trouble to Ichiko. Rukia then theorized that an artificial soul is having their own mind and wants to do its own thing with a unique rabbit drawing. Sino, all of Rukia's drawing is on rabbit, cause that's her favorite animal. After a bit of struggle, Ichigo managed to hunt down the artificial soul and the two began to battle. Ichigo slowly gained the upper hand in the battle, but their fight was halted by the horror's arrival. The artificial soul located the enemy, but he was slightly overpowered by the horror. The Shimigami substitute came and helped the artificial soul to defeat the enemy, and the Kisuke crowd then arrived in an attempt to retrieve the item Ginko Gun due to being faulty. In the end, Ichigo decided to stuff the artificial soul inside a teddy lion and kept him in his yard. Thus, Gonsama was born. The Soul Society noticed Rukia's absence and decided to send Eikichiro Saido to investigate the situation. Up next, we learn about the sad past of Ichigo's childhood. One rainy day, Ichigo was walking near a river with his mother, Masaki, and then he noticed it, a lolly standing on the edge. Ichigo rushed it there to help her, but moments later, the lolly disappeared, and Ichigo suddenly realized that his mother died in front of him, as if she tried to protect the Shota Ichigo from something. Flashback finishes and Kurosaki's family visited Masaki's grave for the annual memorial. Meanwhile, Saido tracked Rukia's location and demand her return, but she refuses as she is hiding the fact that she has given her power to Ichigo, which is against the law. One thing led to another, the two Shimigami starts to battle each other, but it was soon interrupted by Horo's arrival. The Glam Fisher attacked Karen and Yuzu, putting the two lollies' life in danger. Ichigo returns in perfect timing and slashed the enemy's tentacle to free his sister, Yuzu. However, his other sister, Karen, is still held hostage. A shocking truth was then revealed. Grand Fisher was actually Ichigo's mother's murder, and the little lolly was actually a bait. 
After a few exchanges, Saido managed to move Karen from the enemy, but he suffered it from severe damage, which renders him unconscious. Ichigo requested Rukia to step aside as he wants to revenge for his mother. After using a few sneaky tactics, Grand Fishers managed to impale Ichigo and start converting the bait into Masaki's appearance to distract Ichigo further, which led the Horo successfully pierce the through Ichigo's shoulder. Within Ichigo's subconsciousness, the soul of Masaki manages to manifest in front of her son and encourage Ichigo to survive. Ichigo's man returned to the battlefield and muscled it all of his strength to pull Grand Fisher's tentacle towards him to pierce the enemy. Grand Fisher fled away as Ichigo collapsed it in front of Rukia. In the end, Saido decided to not report Rukia and we had wholesome father son moments in front of Masaki's grave. This is probably one of the best moments in the Substitution Gami arc. It explains Ichigo's background story really well, while explaining to us why Ichigo wants to protect his comrade despite against great danger. He knew the pain of losing someone he loved and he doesn't want to let that ever happen again. This makes Ichigo a much more well-rounded character with a proper background story and it supports his identity and motive well. Then we have more of a light-hearted episode. One evening, Ichigo along with his classmate went to a Don Kanoji show, aka a showman who self-proclaimed to be a spirit mediumship. Interestingly, Horo did show up and was actually giving Ichigo some trouble. Don came in clutch with Kanoji style final super attack cannonball to clear enemy's restriction. and allowed the Ichigo to defeat the Horo. Interesting side note, Donji declared Ichigo's to be his student after this incident. Nani? One evening, an important character, Uryu, was introduced. He is a Quincy, a legendary clan that uses his spiritual energy to form arrows to destroy Horo. The four-eyed smartass criticized the Ichigo's battle ability. Fun far, Uryu enjoys sewing, but the next day, Uryu challenged the Ichigo to a duel to see who is better at destroying Horo. For this competition, Ulu activated a unique Horo bait to attract a range of Horos and whoever destroyed the most Horo won the battle. A large number of evil spirits rushed it into the city and Ichigo immediately dashed it to protect his loved one. Chado, I mean Sado's sixth sense, noticed something is wrong in the surrounding and managed to save Karen from danger. This simultaneously unlocked his spiritual potential and awakened the giant's right hand, Brazo Derecha di Gigante and smashed it horror into pieces. Elsewhere, the numb chandelier Horo is lurking around Orihime and her friend. The enemy poisoned it, the school student. Unfortunately, this includes Suzuru and Tatsuki. Her best friend was completely possessed and was instructed to attack Orihime. Orihime knew she couldn't back down and she needs to help her best friend. This determination has unlocked her spiritual power in the form of summoning Sunsun Rika. The six little spirit can execute a range of different unique skills, including barrier protection, healing ability, and slashing attacks. Orihime managed to utilize Sunsun Lika to defeat the enemy, but the fatigue caused her to collapse. Meanwhile, Uryu is too busy sniping the Horo and winning the competition. Both Orihime and Sado were retrieved by Urahara. Gon manages to place Ichiko's family in a safe place, allowing the main protagonist to return to Uryu to settle this once for all. Both Ichiko and Uryu were slaying horrors like a professional ghostbuster. Just when you thought 
while everything is doing well, a giant crack in the sky starts to form and a huge amount of horror start concentrating in that area. Ulu's past was then revealed. We learned that his teacher Soken died from exhaustion fighting five large horrors by himself as no Shimigami showed it up since Ulu hated Shimigami. Back to the present, the four eyes was on the blink of exhaustion but Ichigo showed it up and formed a tag team with Quincy to protect the citizen. The combination between the duo was lethal against horror but the danger was yet from over as suddenly a giant horror Menes Grande broke through the barrier and entered earth. Menes Grande is no other horror, it is a much higher classification and much more dangerous. Soon Ichiko launched the initial attack to gain the enemy's attention while Ulu prepared for his strongest strike. Quincy then asked the Ichiko to give him his Leilioku aka spiritual energy only for the four eyes to find out that Ichiko fights instinctively and does not know how to channel Leilioku. The enemy charged it up for a Cero, aka Hollow Flash, only to be blocked by Ichiko's pure brute force, and then fired it back with slashes. Menace Glande knew Ichiko is a Chico, aka paid player, and decided to flee. After this incident, Ulu learned from his mistake and realized his foolish action almost caused it a detrimental level of harm to the innocents. He then became Ichiko's friend. Ulu is for sure one of the closest thing to a rival character for the main protagonist. From his opposite color design, blue and orange are on the opposite spectrum of the color veal, to his personality, calmly collected compared to Rush Instinctive. Uli was the last and the final character for the Ichiko squad. Then we are back to Slice of Life episode where Gon trying to be cute and gain females attention only to be met with punishment. Poor Gon. By the end of the episode 15, three really very important characters were introduced. Cool Majestic Cat Yorichi and two new Shimigami, Renji and Byakuya aka Rukia's brother. The peak for the Shimigami Asian arc is about to be enrolled. One cold night. Rukia sensed the two ridiculous level of Leilaku are in town. She rushed it out to investigate the situation. Suddenly, a dark shadow jumped it in front of her and slashed it down to the floor, displaying immense strength. Lenji, 6th Division Lieutenant, along with Captain Byakuya, entered the scene. They confronted Rukia and stated giving Shinrigami power to a human is a serious crime in the Soul Society, and the duo is here to bring her back for trial and to kill the human who stole her power. Lenji then proceeded to hunt down Rukia, but his attack was halted by a spirit arrow. Ulu decided to help his classmate. Elsewhere, Ichigo discovered a taped con and a farewell letter from Rukia. Gon then explained it to Ichigo that Rukia might be in trouble with Soul Society. The high school student dashed it out and soon he found a collapsed Ulu. He immediately entered the Shimigami mode and attacked it Lenji. The two engaged it in a soul fight where a series of attacks were exchanged with no obvious winner. Lenji is agitated and decided to unlock the special ability of Zanbaki Soul. Shikai by announcing the name of his soul. Zabimaru. He then leaped it into the sky and slashed it Zabimaru down at Ichiko's shoulder. Blood burst it out of Ichigo's shoulder as he collapsed it to his knee. Ichigo gathered it himself and tried to battle Lenji again. The Shimigami substitute slowly get used to Lenji's attack and his insane amount of Leiatsu slowly helps him to gain the upper hand. Eventually, he finds an opening to land a crucial attack on Lenji, only for his Zambato to be slashed it in half by, by Byakuya's Shikai Senka. Captain finished the Ichigo with a single strike. Using his last breath, Ichigo tries to hold Byakuya's action but it was stopped by Rukia as she doesn't want him to suffer further. The fish Mikami returned to Soul Society and Ichigo was later retrieved by Urahala. The high school student finally recovered and learned from the shop owner that they have 10 days before Rukia's trial begins and he will train them to rescue her. This was perhaps the most crucial moment of the arc. Not only did it introduce a completely different world, Soul Society, but also 
also introduces two really strong characters. One that completely destroyed Uchiko. He can no longer protect his comrade. His identity as the one to protect has been shattered. It was the character development that Ichiko needed and it also switched the Ichiko's goal of becoming a substitute to rescuing Rukia, which is far more interesting than his initial goal. Ichigo was brought into Urahara's underground training area, then it begins the training arc. Play them rocky music. Every good training involves the main protagonist getting beat up and Ichigo is no different. What is better than getting beat up by an old sensei? Getting beat up by a lawyer. Shut the mate! Shut, shut the fucking mate! <laughs> Meanwhile, Ulu, Orihime and Sado begin their specific training with Yorichi as well. After getting used to Ulu's pressure, Ichigo's damaged Reiyaku is slowly recovering. AKA danger causes Leiaku to increase and unlock the potential. AKA Saiyan Logic. Nine, Beefy Tensei then chopped the Uchiko's chain of fate and sent him down into a giant hole with restriction. This puts Ichiko in great danger. If he does not get out in time, his chain will be destroyed and he can no longer return to his body and he will become a horror. Ichigo attempted multiple times to run out the wall but it was simply too steep. More and more time went by, his chain of face starts to change and hollow features start to appear like the mask started forming on Ichigo's face. Time is running out soon. Ichigo suddenly woke up in his subconscious mind where he met a cool emo uncle character. He asked him to reveal his true Zanbato ability while unlocking his Shimikami power. Millions of boxes were scattered across the dimension. Ichigo has limited time to locate the box that contained his power before time runs out. Using his Leiyaku, he finally located the box that holds the answer. Kurosaki Ichigo has regained his Shimigami power once again. After Ichigo regained his Shimigami power, he now needs to learn how to unlock Shikai so that he can be at least on par with Renji. Urahala unlocked his Shikai by announcing Benny Hime. Without much issue, the shopkeeper completely destroyed the Ichigo's remaining Zanbato. The high school student saw the cool looking uncle once again. He then revealed his identity to his master. Ichigo shouted his name, Zangetsu, and his Shikai has been unlocked. The Shimigami substitute then unleashed his unique ability, Getsuga Tensho, at Ulahala. and successfully passed it the training. Simultaneously, Orihime, Sado and Uliu have also completed their training. The squad is ready to rescue their friend, Rukia. And that concludes the first arc of Bleach, the Agent of Shimigami. It was a really entertaining arc with a lot of battles. New character introduction and character development. Two of the best moments for me it is learning about Ichiko's past and how Byakuga finished the main protagonist with a single strike, setting up the power scale and it makes Ichiko beatable. My favourite character of the arc is probably Ichigo. He has by far the most amount of character development and a sad background story. I would score this arc a 7 out of 10. Great pirate arc overall, but nothing spectacular and stands out. That being said, you weep, stay safe and stay blessed, I'm out. Peace! <laughs>